Thanks. Yeah, I got the mic. So now we have 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 equals 0. And what we're going to do is solve on the intervals of 0 to 2 pi. So the main important thing that I like to do when first kind of like teaching this is to just solve the equation without the trig function. So let's kind of go back to a little bit of algebra 1. And let's just pretend I had 3x minus 1 equals 0. To solve, we use our inverse operations. Right? Everybody follows. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the same thing. But now it's just not x. It's x that had, it's the tangent squared of x. So there's just an extra operation that's happening to the variable. But let's apply the same rules. You apply our inverse operations. Divide by 3. Therefore, we have tangent squared of x equals 1 third. Um, now, this is tangent squared, so I have to undo the squaring. So I'm actually going to go an extra step here. Square root, so therefore I have tangent of x equals plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. I can rationalize the denominator. And therefore, my tangent of x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. Now, I still have not solved for my variable. Because my ver what my variable is, is x, what value of x when I take the tangent of it, gives me the value of plus or minus square root of 3 over 3. So we still need to find the value of x. We just have the value of when we take the tangent of the value, we get plus or minus square root of 3 over 3. So we don't have the value of x yet. So to find the value of x, we are going to apply going back to our unit circle. Going back to the lovely days of making sure we can construct the unit circle and understanding it. So remember on our unit circle, we're dealing with the first quadrant. There's kind of uh, our three main important points that we're going to be dealing with. And what I want to know is, out of these angles, which points are going to provide me with plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3? So we have our first point, which remember was square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Well, remember tangent, uh, tangent of theta for any angle, missing angle, is represented by the y over the x. So if I do y over x, is that going to give me square root of 3 over 3? I don't know. Let's check it out. 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. Yes. So that is going to be our angle. So remember, this first angle right here is pi over 6. Then if we go around the rest of the unit circle, what other points are going to have 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. And remember, it can be positive or negative. So our next angle, reflecting over the y-axis, is going to be 5 pi over 6, where that is a negative square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. The next point, which is 7 pi over 6, has a negative square root of 3 over 2, comma negative 1 half. And then our last point, is going to be an 11 pi over 6, as that angle has a coordinate point of square root of 3 over 2, comma negative 1 half. So do you guys see how all these solutions, if I take my y coordinate over my x coordinate, I'm either going to get a plus or a minus square root of 3 over 3, right? Because whenever you take 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus. Whenever you take 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, you're going to get a reduced value of square root of 3 over 3. So all of these points work. And my solution, I'm looking for the positive and negative version. So therefore, my answer on the interval of 0 and 2 pi, meaning only on the interval of the unit circle, of one revolution of the unit circle, I'm going to have four values. So I can say x equals. So the value, my angle, when I take the tangent of my angle, when it equals square root of 3 over 3 on the interval of 0 and 2 pi equals pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, well, just these ones, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. OK? It only, it only equals the values that when I have these coordinates. Because when I take the y over the x, I get a reduced value of square root of 3 over 3.
Okay.